All right, hold on. Let's see somebody chat. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll send that. Don't let me forget. I'll send that course ID before we leave. Make sure you get that. Oh, did I lose the screen? Yeah. All right, hold on. All right, there we go. All right, so 1.2 is linear equations and rational equations. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's go back a little bit. This is, uh, let's start from the beginning of that, making sure that we're okay. But if you look at 1.2 and the way that it's set up, they are expecting you to already know how to solve equations. Um, they're more so creating it, creating a section more so like a review than it is starting from the beginning. So I just want to make sure we're okay with a few things before we go all the way in. All right, so we're looking at solving equations. Uh, it's just a statement that two algebraic, uh, that shouldn't be equations, sorry about that. Should be two algebraic expressions. Statement that two algebraic expressions are equal. So simple example of that is x plus five equal to seven. All right, so your solution is going to be value or values. Uh, once we get into more complex equations, uh, you will have more than one solution that will make an equation true. All right, so an example of that, in this case, is x equal to 2. So in other words, what value can you plug in for x? to make that statement true, and that would be true. Or you can ask yourself the question, when is x plus five equals seven? So if you're asking yourself, when is x plus five equals seven? The answer is when x is equal to two. questions so far. So we will solve by what I call opposite operations. They're the operations that undo what the other one does.
So addition and subtraction are opposite of each other. In other words, they undo what the other one does. Multiplication and division are opposite of each other. So when I look at, I'll go back to the equation. X plus five equals seven. My goal is to get X by itself on one side of our equation. That's what it means to solve for a variable. You wanna get that variable by itself on one side of your equation. In order to do that though, you have to undo what's being done to it. So when I look at my original equation, I have X plus five equals seven. So I need to undo the addition of five. And in order to do that, I need to subtract five from it. Now your equation is split up into two sides, right and left side of your equal sign. So when I look at my equal sign, I have a right and left side. And in order to keep your equivalency, if you're going to uh, subtract five on one side of your equal sign, you have to subtract five on the other side as well. So that five cancels on the left, leaving me with just X. And then on the right, seven minus five is two. So X equal to two will be my answer. And that right there is the foundation of solving equations, the foundation of solving any equation. You're trying to undo what's being done to your variable. Your goal is to get your variable on one side of the equation alone. And just to uh, further solidify what we're doing, if I have y minus 10 equal to 15, I'm gonna add 10 to both sides of my equation. Once again, split up by the equal sign. 10 is canceled on the left, leaving me with y. On the right, I have 25. Remember, you can always check your answer by plugging it back into your original equation to see if it works. 25 minus 10 is 15. Next one, 5a equal to 13, I would divide both sides by 5. 5 over 5 is 1. And also don't forget that 1a is the same thing as a. 1x, same thing as x. 1y is the same thing as y. So it's assumed that you know that there's a 1 sitting in front of any single variable. Uh, so when these files cancel, they cancel down to 1a, but you will never see 1a in your uh, most simplest form. So it's always it will just be a. And then here, 13 over 5 will be your final answer. You don't have to convert that to a mixed number or decimal. Um, if you have a fraction, you are expected to write it in simplest form, but you don't have to write it as a fraction or decimal. So if I had... four over six, and all they're saying is that they expect you to reduce that down. In which the twos will cancel and leave you with two thirds. So you don't have to convert it to a decimal. You don't have to convert it to a mixed number, but if it can be reduced, you are expected to, uh, expected to do so. All right, last one like this. Um, here we have x divided by 9 equal to 11. So we multiply 9 to both sides. 9's cancel, leaving you x on the left, and then 99 on the right. All right, any questions on anything before we add more to it?
All right, so each one of those were only one step problems. So here we have uh, more than one thing going on, more than one operation being applied to your variable. All right, so the most efficient way to solve for X, remember your goal is to get X by itself, is to move the one first. Um, now you can divide by two if you like, but if you decide to do that, then you will have to divide everything by two, which will create fractions. And most of us do not want to deal with fractions. So the most efficient way of you dealing with this problem is to subtract the one first. So one and negative one cancels, leaves me with two X equal to 16. Then divide by two. X is equal to eight. This thing out. All right. Okay, I'm trying to use thing off my screen. It won't go off. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's add a little more to it. All right, let me try one thing like it's acting up. Uh, let's see if that works. All right, so here we have two times the quantity of X minus three minus 17 equal to 13 minus three times the quantity of X plus two. So the first thing we'll do is distribute the two into the parentheses and on the other side of our equal sign, we will distribute that negative three. That would be two X minus six minus 17 equal to 13 minus three X minus six. There you go, right? So from here, notice we have the ability to simplify on this right side and simplify on the left side separately. So before I move anything across the equal sign, I will simplify as much as I can on both sides of my equation. So over here, negative six and negative 17 will give me 2x minus 23. Over here, 13 and the negative six will give me seven. All right, make sure we're okay. Now here we notice that we have x in two different places in our equal, uh, on our equation. And they're on separate sides of our equation. So what we have to do is take our X terms, get them all to one side, take our terms without X, move them to the other side. Um, doesn't matter which term you move first, as long as you stay correct with your mathematics, you still will get the same answer at the end. So we have two X minus 23 equals seven minus three X. So what I would do is add three X to both sides. Remember, if you want it, you can move the 2x. That means you have to subtract 2x from both sides. You can move 7, or you can move the 23. 
once again, it doesn't matter. As long as you stay correct with your mathematics, you'll be fine. So we have 5x minus 23 equals 7. Now I'll add 23. Five x equal to thirty, and we can finish this off by dividing both sides by five. X equal to six. All right, here we have 5x minus the quantity of 2x plus, uh, 2x minus 10, excuse me, equal to 35. So once again, we have parentheses that we need to get rid of. This minus sign, be careful. A lot of times people will give the minus sign to the 2x, but forget to give it to the 10. So make sure you distribute the minus sign to everything or each term that's in the parentheses that follows. So you're distributing that the same way you would do a regular number. So it'll be 5x minus 2x, and then negative to a negative will give us plus 10, equal to 35. All right, so notice the difference between this one and the last one. This time, both of our x terms are on the same side of the equation. So since that's the case, we can go ahead and combine them. So 5x minus 2x will give us, whoa, 3x plus 10 equal to 35. All right, now we can go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. And finish it off by dividing by three. That would be twenty five over three. Let's look at another one. Somebody drawing on the screen. <laughs> So here we have uh, x plus 2 over 4 minus x minus 1 over 3 equal to 2. And we have fractions involved in our solving or in our equation. And you can handle this one or two ways. Either you can solve the equation with the fractions involved, or you can do what we call clearing out your fractions. So 
So we'll go ahead and look at that process. So first thing we do is find the LCD. And the LCD in this case would be 12. So you're talking about the least common denominator. Your LCD is the smallest number. All right, so it's the smallest number that each denominator can divide into evenly. Smallest number that each denominator can divide into evenly. So the four and the three can divide into 12. Now, uh, if you don't find the LCD, um, let's say if you saw 24, as long as four and three can divide into the number that you choose as your LCD, you still will be fine but you just have to make sure that each number in the denominator can divide into the number that you're calling your LCD. If you have a number larger than 12, and all, all that means is that it's going, to count, it's going to ensure that you have to reduce at the end. So. All right, so once you find your LCD, Um, no, it's not always 12. It just depends on what your denominators are. So uh, somebody in the chat asks, is it always 12? So let's say if it was um, four and five. So the smallest number that both four and five can divide into would be 20. So it's always dependent upon what your uh, denominators are. Um, let's say if I had two, two and five, then the, small, then the number I would use is 10 because two and five can divide into 10 evenly. No problem, no problem at all. All right, so we had four and three. I believe it was in that order. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so now, so notice um, we're not going to multiply top and bottom by the LCD. We're going to multiply each numerator. We're going to multiply across the equation. All right. All right, so we have to multiply each numerator by that 12. Um, I haven't distributed yet. You'll see why in a second. And also don't forget this two, this two over here. A lot of times people forget the terms that do not have a fraction and they don't multiply by the 12, but everything needs to be multiplied by the 12 in order to keep your equivalency. Next step is to simplify. So this four divides into 12, these three, this three divides into 12, and these four. So this is why we needed something that both four and three can divide into evenly so that it can do so. That would be three x plus two, four x minus one. 12 times 2 is 24. So now we have a regular linear equation. And I don't think I mentioned it before, but uh, we'll get there. Uh, they are called linear equations because these type of equations uh, create lines when you draw them on a graph. That's why they're called linear equations. All 
All right, so now that we're here, we can go ahead and treat this equation as we would a regular uh, linear equation. We'll distribute, distribute three, and then distribute negative four. Don't forget that negative. So I guess a fourth step could have put there to solve. So that's three X plus six minus four X plus four equal to 24. Combine your like terms, three X minus X is negative X, six plus four plus 10. 24 is fine, stays the same. Subtract 10. And don't forget, we are solving for x, not negative x. So we need to move the negative. I'm going to take it to the other side. x is equal to negative 14. Any questions before we do another one? All right. Once we put uh, variables in our denominator, start working with uh, what we call rational equations. Uh, any fraction involved with equations are sometimes called rational. So even the ones previous can be uh, listed as a rational equation just because that's a fraction involved. But most of the time when uh, you mention rational equations is because you have a variable in your denominator. So looking at solving rational equations, we want to do the same thing that we uh, just did for the last problem. We want to find the LCD. We have x, 5, and 2x. If we were to uh, look at the smallest term that each one of those could divide into. Hey, Professor uh, Tucker. Yes. And my bad, I got kicked out. Um, so you never want the x negative, right? No, sir. OK. All right. Good question, good question. All right, anything else before I go ahead? Anybody else? Are you good? All right, so x, 5, and 2x, the smallest number that each one of those denominators can divide into evenly, or the smallest term, I should say, would be 10x. You got 5 times 2, which is 10, and then that 1x uh, would take care of the 1x that would be in the denominators. So when I look at a 10x, I'm going to multiply it to each numerator now. So we're following the same steps in the previous example. Find LCD and multiply the LCD to each numerator. Now we're going to cancel or reduce, simplify. You got X's that will reduce in the first one. You're left with 10 times 1, which is 10. The next one, 5 goes into 10, leaves you with 2. So 2 times x times 1 is just 2x. And in the next one, you got x that cancel. And then 2 goes into 10, leaves you with 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 
So make sure we are okay before we uh, move any further. All right, so once you're here, we follow the same rules as if it was a regular linear equation. Subtract 15. So we have negative 5. Uh, let me go back to that. Negative 5 equal to 2x. And then we can finish it off by dividing by 2. All right, negative five over two is our answer. All right, questions, questions, questions. We'll do at least two more examples before we close it out. So this next one. X over X minus three. Oh, there's not an X in the second one though. That's a three, sorry about that. X over X minus three equals three over X minus three plus nine. All right, so first thing we need to do, find the LCD. Notice that we only have one denominator. In this case, that is X minus three. So it's okay for you to have a quantity as a denominator. Uh, that's what rational expressions are about. So x minus 3, a quantity or expression, as I say. So the x minus 3 is our denominator, is our common denominator. And we're going to take that x minus 3 and multiply it to each numerator. Hey, sir. Yes, sir. I just had a quick question. I'm having uh -huh. some trouble with this LCD thing. Uh huh. How, are you, how can it be an x... Like, how can it be an X and a negative three at the same time? I thought it was just one number. Okay. Now, X um, minus negative three represents a number. So don't forget, let's say if I let X be equal to, if I let X be equal to five, when I plug in five, that five minus three is actually going to be two. So that means two would be in my denominator. See what I mean? That X minus three, the whole X minus three represents a okay. number. All right. Thank you. Appreciate All right, it. no problem. All right. Oh, I like the two be look. Ran out of room over there, but uh, I think I'm good. Okay, so we multiply x minus three to each numerator. And um, what your classmate just brought up was very key because we cannot, um, cannot cancel out just an X uh, or just the negative three. That whole X minus three has to be what cancels out. So it's the whole quantity of X minus three that will cancel because once again, the X minus three represents one number. And so on this next one, the whole quantity of X minus three is what counts. It, it, the least, it was the least common denominator because the, it's x over 3. If the x wasn't there, it would be 9, right? Um, now, let me make sure I understand what you're saying. Going back to the original problem, so you're saying if I just had... Uh, I can leave if you just two. had the 3s, it would be I, 9. Well, we I could, thought it was 9, too. Well, we could just use 3, right? Oh, yeah, true, because 3 would go into 3. Right, yeah, so you could just use 3. But okay. because, because the, the x, x is there, we got to do x over 3. Yep, you got to do x minus 3. 
Oh, it's minus three. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yep. So if there's a minus sign or a plus sign, then you have to use that whole quantity. So even if it was X minus three and X plus three, that represents two different numbers. So that oh. means my LCD would be X minus three, X plus three, because the X plus three, once again, let's say if I go back to, if I let X be equal to five, well, that means this denominator would be two because five minus three would give me two. This denominator would be eight because five plus three would be eight. That's if, you know, X were to be equal to five. Uh -huh. so, so if there's any change in those signs, then that would be a whole different denominator. Gotcha. Okay. I understand now. Mm -hmm. Let me erase all this stuff. All right, anything else, guys, before I go? Everybody good, good, good. All right, so what we're left with now is just x equal to 3. And over here, we have x minus 3. That 9 can be distributed. And that will be 9x minus 27. All right, on the right, combine your like terms. So that's x equal to 9x minus 24. Subtract 9x from both sides because now our goal should be to get all of my x terms to one side of the equation. So I'm subtracting 9x from both sides. That will give me negative 8x equal to negative whoa, 24. And now I can finish it off by dividing both sides by negative 8. All right, so before we go any further, questions, questions, questions. Now, we're almost finished with this one. So when I look at my solution, I have x equal to 3. And whenever dealing with rational expressions, I always need to, even if I don't go and check, remember we can always check our solution by plugging it into our original equation. Even if I don't wanna do all that, I at least need to check my denominators and look at my solution and make sure I'm not creating an undefined situation or um, a situation that's not gonna work for us. So notice if I were to plug three into this equation, Go back. That'd be zero. Ah, why did I put zero? So if I were to plug that back in. I get 3 over 3 minus 3 equal to 3 over 3 minus 3 plus 9. And notice I get 3 over 0 in two places. But it doesn't matter as long as I get it in one spot. That messes me up because remember, 0 in your denominator is undefined. And we can't have that. So uh, if you have zero in your denominator, that is undefined. So
So since x equal three produces zero in the denominator, um, we cannot use it. The term for that uh, is extremes. So x equal to three is extraneous. And since excuse the handwriting, I'm still getting used to writing on the screen. It already wasn't the best uh, since it would be our only option. All right, so since x equal to three uh, is our only option for a solution, this is, means that the answer is no solution because we saw that x equal to three could not work for us. So there's no solution that will work. There's no value that I can plug in for x that will make this a true statement. Now, if we had, uh, and which this will come up, you know, as we progress forward and get more complicated problems, uh, we can't have more than one solution it is possible for one to work and the other one not work. So of course, then we wouldn't write no solution. We would just use the one that works as a solution. One more, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so we have three over x plus six plus one over x minus two equal to four over x squared plus four x minus 12. Uh, three over x plus two. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do just like before is to find the LCD. And the way we would do so in this case is to compare each denominator. We have x plus six, x minus two, and x squared plus four x minus 12. Now, whenever you have a situation like this, it is best to try to factor the trinomial to see if you have any common terms or common expressions. And if you were to factor this trinomial, this would be x plus six times x minus two. So um, if you're sketchy on uh, factoring, uh, make sure you brush up on it. They are expecting you to know factoring uh, or shoot me an email. Um, I can do what I can to uh, walk you through some factoring. Uh, I think I have a video already made with some factoring um, you know, tips or whatever. So shoot me the email and I can, uh, talk to you about it or shoot you that video and you let me know if it helps and everything like that. But uh, factoring, they don't even spend time on it. They are expecting you to know how to factor coming into this section. So like I said, just get with me and we'll try to get you caught up. All right, so recognize uh, when we look at this, these expressions, the LCD is going to be a combination of X plus six and the X minus two. So we have x plus six, x minus two, and then both of those are combinations of that final expression. So we don't have to write them a second time. Because remember the goal is to multiply each numerator by something that each one of the denominators can cancel out. 
So when I go to multiply this LCD to each numerator, so that'd be three times x plus six, x minus two, Um, might run out of room. Just like it's a three, and that was a four on top, right? And I'm going to rewrite that trinomial in its factored form. So this is what we're looking at. We're multiplying each numerator by their LCD. And uh, while you're writing, you notice that the X plus six in the first term will be able to cancel. X minus two in the second one will be able to cancel. And then in the third one, each expression of X plus two and uh, X plus six and X minus six will be able to cancel. So that's what we're looking for. So that's why we don't have to uh, incorporate anything but the, the quantities that we see which is x plus six and x minus two. All right, so now that leaves us with three times x minus two plus one times x plus six and x to equal to four. Distribute the three. One times anything is itself, so that's just x plus six is equal to four. Combine your like terms, 3x and 1x, it's 4x, negative 6 and positive 6 will actually cancel. So that's 4x equal to 4. Finish it off by dividing by four. X is equal to one. Okay. Oh, I see we got one more thing. Let me do one more thing, then I'll let you guys go. One more thing. Oh, I got two. Well, I got 20 minutes, so you got to be fine. All right. So uh, one more thing. Any questions before I do this last thing out of the section? Questions, concerns, comments? All right. So we have these uh, scenarios that can occur when solving. You need to watch out for. So the first one here seems like a regular equation: two x plus one, two times excuse excuse me, two times the quantity of x plus one equal to two x plus three. Do your distribution. That'd be two x plus two equal to two x plus three. Subtract 2x from both sides. That leaves me with 2 equal to 3, which is a false statement because, of course, 2 is not equal to 3. 
All right. So your answer isn't false. Just letting you know we, we created a false statement. And the reason why I say that is because remember I told you that uh, whenever you have these four terms, 2x plus 2, 2x plus 3, it didn't matter which term you decide to move first, uh, you still will get the same answer. In this case, you'll get the same scenario before you get to your answer. So um, you could have had 0 equal to 1. You could have had negative 1 equal to 0. Um, well, the bottom line is you would have had two numbers that are not equal that would be set equal to each other once your variables cancel out. So what first happened was your variables canceled. Now your variables cancel and you get a false statement. Your answer will be no solution. So whenever your variables cancel and you end up with a false statement, your answer is no solution. Once again, you're not looking for a two equal to three. You're looking for a false statement. Um, your answer will be no solution. All right, last one, distribute that six. 4x plus six equal to six x plus six minus two x. Combine your like terms. 4x plus six is equal to four x plus six. So you might be able to see where we're going here. This time, subtract 4x from both sides. And I have 6 equals 6, which is true. And also, once again, it didn't have to be 6 equal to 6. If you would have uh, subtracted the 6s and then subtracted negative 4x, you would have gotten 0 equal to 0, which is true. So your bottom line is you're trying to get a true statement. Uh, in this scenario, you want to have a true statement. So variables cancel. Your variables cancel and you end up with a true statement. Your answer will be all real numbers. So in the previous example, there is no value I can plug in that would uh, make that a true statement. There's no solution. In this example right here, I can plug in anything and it'll work. I can plug in any value and it'll make it a true statement. Any number you like. All right, questions, questions, questions. All right. So make sure you try this stuff out. Make sure you get into my math lab and uh, get started. Sometimes questions don't come up until you actually start working on these things. Um, if you have any questions over the weekend, feel free to shoot me an email. You know, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, outside of that, I uh, appreciate you guys showing up. I have a question. Uh, oh, got a question? Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. I might just join the class. When are the math labs due? Yeah, you just joined the class. I noticed I was going to get you later. No, I'm just messing up. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, um, I, right now, there is no due date. Um, if you go into my math lab, you'll see a date of December 11th. And so um, I just put that date out there as a soft due date. Um, when we get closer to closing out uh, chapter one, I will put a date out there when all of chapter one's homework 
and assignments will be due. So right now, you just, you know, work on it as we progress throughout the course. Um, but it's not due. I, I wanted to leave that flexible so that if it takes us a little longer than expected, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about, you know, messing with a date. I can just wait and then put a date out there when we're getting close to the end of chapter one. Okay. And is your syllabus up there? I couldn't find it. It should be. It should be on the main, like the main tab main menu if not i'll make sure of it um now i know i haven't adjusted it to the fall 20 yet but all the, all the information is still the same but i'll check i'll go in there and check and i'll uh, make sure of that okay okay thank you is and there you specific oh sorry sorry and you upload these videos to canvas yes what i'll do is um i'm going to uh you know convert this and uh make it a youtube link and then okay. I'll email it to you and then put it in Canvas. As oh, okay, thank you. Yep. So you should have two two spots where it would be at. Okay, thank you. No problem. I think there was another one. Yeah, so in my um, math lab, where would I actually, because in the homework tab, there isn't anything that's popping up. So where would I find the assignments? Or... All right, let me check it out. Matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and share the screen. So I see it there. Let me look at. It. I may have forgot to change the due dates for you guys. I don't know why mine. Uh, when you press homework, it just says. Yeah, it might be me. I'm about to check it now. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, 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 uh. Yep, I changed the due dates for my 162 and I forgot to do it for you guys. So, gotta do it. Let's, let's check and make sure. I'm not sure I did that for um, this class too. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I'm in the wrong class. That's the summer class. Okay, yeah, okay. So I'm, hold on. I'm in the wrong class. Do have my summer share a lot. Yeah, 161 fall. Hmm. Yeah, the date and everything is fine for your shell and everything is assigned. Hmm. And you guys say that when you go in, you don't see homework assignments at all? Yeah, when I press it, it just, it doesn't show anything. This is your content has been opened in a new browser window, but nothing's popped up. Okay. Uh, what is your internet browser? Uh, Safari. That's it. Uh, Chrome or Firefox. Okay. Yeah, Safari doesn't work well with uh, my math lab. Gotcha, oh, gotcha. With, oh, with Pearson, I should say. Wait, say again? What, is that, what does that mean? Uh, Safari, uh, Safari internet browser normally come with uh, Apple products. Um, just doesn't work well with it at all. Some stuff would, just won't come up. And like like he said, he didn't even see the homework. Okay, so mm -hmm. do I have to do anything different on this? What do you mean? What 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 are you trying to work with? As far because as my it? homework does, isn't showing up either. Yeah, so you would download either Chrome or or Firefox. 
Got it. All right. Thank you. Yep. And that, that'll that work for you. That should be it. Okay. All right. Hey. No problem. No problem. Anything else? Anybody else before we uh look to close out? Got a good straight straight. So basically, all our assignments are on my life, my math lab. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep, that's it. Um, for those who may have missed that first day, uh, the test that you have access to, um, you get two shots to get the best grade possible. They're not password protected. They're not timed. They're not proctored. But we will have at least one proctored test, which is your final exam, in which you know uh, everybody will zoom in. You have to make sure you're, you're able to be seen visually. And um, you know, I will sit there while you guys do it type stuff. But the other tests uh, you can do on your own at your leisure. Okay, gotcha. And that's on my map labs. Yes, you should be able to see okay. all of those now. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Anything else? Anybody else before we close? Make sure you're good. And if you think of anything, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I'll answer you. Um, outside of that, have a great weekend. Be safe. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. Thank you. All right. No problem. Thank you.